T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And one. Go Falcon, go to Larry. Copy, one Alpha. Vehicle is pitching down range. Data on propulsion is nominal. T plus 35 seconds into the Polaris Dawn mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 to new heights. Power and telemetry nominal. And we're throttling down in preparation down. for max Q. Next call out, the vehicle supersonic. And there on the left side, we've got Falcon the Polaris Dawn crew. Supersonic. Thumbs up from the pilot on the left side there. Max Q. We're throttled one, back throttle up, up to power. One Bravo. And we heard the call out, one Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That just tells the crew what would happen uh, should they need to initiate anything. But right now, everybody making nominal call outs on Falcon 9. Nice views from the ground camera. And nice view from inside Dragon. Impact chill is underway. The announcement lets us know we've begun the final chill of the second stage engine in preparation for its activity coming up at about T plus two minutes and 40 seconds. Two minutes into flight, everything continues to look good. We'll have in half a minute Three major activities, shutdown of the nine Merlin 1D engines, stage separation, stage down. and then ignition of the second stage engine. Throttle down, we're holding a constant acceleration now for the crew just below 4 Gs. See, we're coming up 70 kilometers. Preparing for Miko. Main engine cut off. Two Alpha. Stage separation confirmed. Copy, two Alpha. As you can tell by the cheers behind us and the views on your screen, the first stage booster now on its way to attempt landing on just read the instructions. Second stage there on the right hand side of your screen. You can see that the first stage has not yet reached its apogee. You can see the altitude there. Lots of thumbs up there, from, <coughs> excuse me, from pilot Scott Kid Potit. Now three and a half minutes into the Polaris Dawn mission. First stage continuing to make its way up, up to its apogee. We'll see that altitude begin to slow down. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Great news there indicating Dragon copy. that the second stage trajectory is looking good. Now the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. If we get first stage views, we might be able to see the Florida coast in the background. Oh, they're right there. Yeah, we sure can. Once again, the, our drone ship is attempting to land on, um, excuse me, our booster is attempting to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Now the next event coming up will be the entry burn taking place around T plus seven and a half minutes. This burn will utilize three of the engines on the first stage. 
That helps to slow the booster down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon copies. Following the entry burn, we will see the landing burn, and that'll be around T plus nine minutes. That one will be just a single engine burn, and that will bring the booster down for a soft landing on our drone ship. Around the same time as that, we expect to see Dragon um, be, we expect to see Dragon be injected into orbit. Everything continuing to look good for second stage there on the right-hand side of your screen. Beautiful glow with that MVAC engine nozzle. We can see the crew settling Dragon quite... Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. Crew seems pretty comfortable there at T plus six minutes. They're at about four Gs, and everything looks good. First stage continuing its descent back down to planet Earth. We can see the crew remain with their visors down in the locked position. That'll remain that way until they are in orbit. Everything continuing to look great with the second stage uh, engine burn there, as well as the- Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Dragon copies. We're about 30 seconds away from the first stage entry burn. This is the first of two burns that the first stage will perform. Designed to help reduce the amount of drag experienced by the first stage. Stage two FTS has saved. All right, standing by for entry burn begin on the first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen. And right on time, you can see on your left-hand screen that the entry burn has begun. There's three engines lit on that first stage vehicle. And this is about a 29 second burn and helps slow the vehicle down as it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And there you can see that the engines have now shut down on that first stage, that concludes the entry burn. And the cool part about this uh, with the stage one vehicle returning back to Earth is we get to fully utilize the atmosphere. The atmosphere actually... Stage two is in terminal guidance. The atmosphere actually scrubs about 70% of the velocity uh, on the vehicle. So we use that entry burn to help slow the vehicle down. Then we utilize the atmosphere uh, and the drag from the atmosphere to slow the vehicle down. And then we do have one single burn for Shannon. the landing burn. <laughs> Copy, Shannon. And next up will be Sika 1. And that is second stage engine cutoff one, and that'll be on the second stage. That MVAC engine on your right hand screen will shut down and allow the vehicle with Dragon attached to coast. MVAC shut down. And there's that shutdown. And the landing burn on the first stage should be starting up here momentarily. And there it is. Landing burn has begun Dragon, for Dragon SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. Dragon SpaceX, launch escape system disarmed. Copy that SpaceX, and we show the scene. And a lot of events happening right there, but you can see that the stage one vehicle has touched down. I'm just read the instructions. 
a very excited crowd there <laughs> here in Hawthorne. We've also confirmed MVAC engine shutdown and orbital insertion of the second stage with the crew on board. Yeah, honestly, a pretty impressive crowd uh, for 2.30 in the morning here. <laughs> We can see the crew enjoying their first taste of microgravity there on the left-hand side of your screen. Now that the MVAC engine has shut down, uh, they are able to uh, just kind of float free. <laughs> <laughs> we might catch a glimpse of the zero-g indicator. I'm not, I can't quite tell if they've Oh, uh, it looks like it's in the uh, upper right-hand corner. It'll uh, come back into view here. Once again, they will keep their visors on until given the okay by uh, core here on the ground. At this point in time, the dragon and the dragon trunk remain attached to the second stage. Second stage is basically saving itself um, in preparation for uh, the separation from the dragon trunk. Of course, the trunk will remain attached to the dragon capsule all the way up until the point in which we begin re-entry operations. The trunk is what will help provide power to the dragon capsule while it is on orbit using its solar arrays. Looks like our first clear view of planet Earth there, our first of many <laughs> for this mission. And the next event coming up will be um, the separation of the dragon from the second stage. I believe this view here is, yep, it's of the trunk. We can see it separating from the second stage. A gorgeous view. We can see that Polaris Dawn. Separation confirmed. Polaris Dawn flying free into the sunrise. We're now at T plus 13 minutes and five seconds into the mission. Next major event will be nose cone deploy. Dragon, SpaceX. Today you embark on a journey not just for yourselves, but for all humanity. Each of you has trained tirelessly and prepared rigorously for this moment. The moment will reach higher in the space than ever before. As you gaze towards the North Star, remember that your courage lights the path for future explorers. We trust in your skills, your bravery, and your teamwork to carry out the mission that lies ahead. Know that the entire team back here is with you every step, watching, supporting, and cheering you on as you walk into space. We are sending you hugs from the ground, Godspeed, Polaris Dawn crew. May you make history and come home safely. Now words from our CE. Dragon, CE, welcome to orbit. The Falcon team is honored to have helped you start your incredible journey. We hope you enjoyed the ride. The whole SpaceX family is looking up to you. Godspeed and good luck. LD, CE, uh, message received. We appreciate the kind words. We wouldn't be on this journey without all 14,000 of you back at, uh, at SpaceX and everyone else cheering us on. We appreciate it, and we're going to get to work now. SpaceX copies. Dragon, you are go to open hatch. Go. Exciting. Copy that, SpaceX. Go to open the hatch. 
Mike, as you mentioned before, that continuous communication. <laughs> as you can hear, we do have a crowd gathering outside of Mission Control uh, here in Hawthorne. In their excitement, somebody dropped a cup. <laughs> We can see our commander, Jared Isaacman, now turning the crank, which allows the uh, that top hatch to open. We'll see him give it uh, a, a, a pretty heavy... Uh, hatch is visually indicating open. Hey, copies. Stand by. Should see him give that hatch a pretty strong jolt to release that stiction. Hatch is now unlatched. Mike talked about, he's, you see him getting his feet, getting his feet set. That's right. Dan, you'd ask if I'd gotten open the hatch. So when you go out as EV-1, just like Jared here as EV-1, that's that's typically the role for for you is to open that hatch. And you guys so have to draw straws, fight over <laughs> who gets it. It's exciting. It is. It's very exciting, yeah. Now, for those of you that have just recently joined, as you can see, we have successfully depressurized the Dragon capsule uh, down to zero PSIA. You see that in the bottom left-hand side, bottom left corner of your screen. Um, our four Polariston crew members um, have uh, gone through the uh, O2 flow, and we see Commander Jared um, Isaacman now standing by uh, to open that top hatch. The nose cone is already open. It opened just shortly after uh, the crew got into orbit. Uh, so... Dragon SpaceX target pressure reached. Copy that SpaceX, and I'm on the hatch now. Jared now opening Dragon Resilience. So we saw some motion on the hatch. Again, he's just giving it kind of that initial tug. And then Sarah gets to push the button to swing that hatch open. Much more movement there on the forward hatch. This must be pretty exciting for Jared because that center part of... Dragon SpaceX, that's a good brace. We're going to have you repeat the operation. Center of the hatch actually has a window. The hatch is unseated. Copy. Let's give it another pull. The hatch is several inches inside the turn. It's in blue light. Copy. We see it. out that tiny window there in the forward hatch knowing he is going to have a much bigger window in just minutes huh. Dragon Space X vent complete EV-1 return to seat And then EV-1 copy, transitioning back under the display. So again, one of the reasons we had Jared do that was to... Dragon SpaceX, we're actually watching that hatch. We're going to have you repeat the last operation. Sounds like they're going to have him repeat them. One of the reasons we're doing that is just to kind of vent any of that okay, residual atmosphere. Back. And 
EV1, you are go for manual hatch open. Sounds like we got our first audible of the day. As we said, that we can open the hatch. Opening the hatch We could open the hatch. We could open the hatch automatically, or we can do it manually. And so they just gave Jared the go to open that hatch manually. So we we just went out of ground station reach. So we'll get the views back. Wow. We'll get the views back real shortly. Uh, and then the, the hatch and will get we'll open. Hopefully we see a hatch open. And hopefully yeah. we see it. Yeah, hopefully we see a hatch open. The hatch is open. SpaceX copies, hatch open. That is fantastic news uh, for those that... SpaceX EV-1, I'm looking at the seals. Initial view looks pretty good. I don't see any bulges or indentations. Copy on hatch seal report. Yeah, that seal that you just heard him talking about, it's such a important part for the end of the EVA, right? So that when they close that hatch again, you get a good... Get a good seal. Can you command open forward hatch? And there is our first view of the forward hatch, wide open to space. If you just jumped in, we are 38 minutes into today's spacewalk, and the hatch is open on Dragon. First view from a helmet cam, looking out. Dragon SpaceX, we see it stalled. EV-1 is go to continue. That structure you see there is... for egress. EV-1 is good. EV-1 transitioning back from under the display. SpaceX copies, we're with you in your helmet cam. Once again, this helmet cam, what we, that structure we see is the, the spacewalker. This is Jared now egressing through the forward hatch of Dragon Resilience. These are the first views of the first ever commercial spacewalk. I'm at the bottom of the mobility is progressing. I have a feeling the crowd is about to go wild. We're SpaceX. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, work sure looks like a perfect world. No! Now, SpaceX, EV1, I'm going to step into Test Matrix 1. Single-handed mobility wow. demonstration. Commander Jared Isaacman, now emerging Copy from... Copy SpaceX, attitude reset complete. EV2, go for egress. There is Sarah's clear to proceed. Crew check for EV2 egress. EV1's good. EV2's good. It's good. 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 EV2 is going to go stand in the door and then step outside. <laughs> <laughs> now this test matrix that uh, Jared just performed and the one that Sarah's about to perform, they have both committed to memory. Um, in order to execute these, um, we saw it being done pretty efficiently. I yeah. can't believe how quickly that time went by. Mike, we were talking about how your space box were hours, and <laughs> these right. guys only have 10 to 15 minutes, and it just like that. Yeah, it, it can go pretty quick, and uh, but fortunately... Um, that still looks good. I see a little bit of a bulge between 14 and 13. So you're hearing Sarah call out some more of the seal check there as, as she's exiting out. It's very 
completed. SpaceX copies that report. Good fix. So this was something we knew might happen. Um, and this Sarah... Is between 28 and 27? Copy. The crew trained on exactly what to do in this scenario. Just pop it back in. And Reseat one it. final between 19 and 18. It might be best reseated with hatch closer. SpaceX copies. Can you repeat the location? Copy EVA complete. Between 19 and 18. All right, copy. I'll track that and uh, ask again when you're in dress. Copy. EV2 is proceeding with egress. Super exciting to see this. Our fellow SpaceXer, yeah. Sarah Gillis, now about to make her spacewalk. EV1, I'm going to hand this back to you. Like we mentioned, Sarah will be performing the same uh, set of mobility tests, uh, so we will do the same. Uh, try to stand by and listen to those comments. I said it before, a lot of us work here because we want to do this. All right, stepping into test matrix one, the single-handed mobility. Really cool to see one of our own out there. That's awesome. And EV2 for awareness, we're watching from the nose cone. Copy all. I would say in all three translation axes, I'm having certainly cross couple movements. Forward, back, I am inducing a bit of a roll. Similarly, it's left, right. And up, down, a bit of a tick. But all our achievable rating is three. Yaw is a three. Roll is a four. And six is a three. the left man, stepping into vertical translation. SpaceX copies, and EV2 for awareness, we're tracking an ingress time at 02 flow, 5, 9 minutes. Copy, 5, 9 minutes. Uh, 
horizontal bars are definitely preferred. And I'm not exactly able to stabilize my body with single hand disturbances. Two of us left and right. Stepping into max reach, do you have visual? A firm, we have visual on the nose cone. Copy from bar four to bar two. From top down. And similar reach from bar two up to bar four. SpaceX copies reach. And the ATS just one can see. Seat pressure five point two five, thirty three point eight Celsius, thirty seven percent humidity. SpaceX copies HUD readout and test matrix one complete. Copy, setting you to test matrix two. Like we mentioned before, views going in and out doing, during, excuse me, due to those ground station uh, coverage gaps. Yeah, we, we, comms are, some of the same. comms are through satellites, but we've got ground stations for video on Dragon. As you can see in the tracker, we just flew over on uh, New Zealand. We're about to go right over the middle of the Pacific. No ground stations in the middle of the Pacific. are actually pretty good. We're hearing the voice of mission specialist Sarah Gillis, our fellow SpaceXer on her spacewalk. She's got, she's got about a minute left, and then she's going to start... Heading inside. And Let's see if it's a little more work I can actually get between almost bar one and bar four on that street. Space has copies. And you can see the Earth dark, and we flew into like an orbital. Right, and test matrix to kind of combine them, so we'll call that complete. Pressure 5.27, 38% humidity, 33.7 Celsius. SpaceX copies, matrix complete, and HUD readout. Stepping into hands free demo. I'm able to engage and disengage my feet. Copy IDV2, and once you are able to engage, disengage, we'll actually have you start ingress for just over five, nine minutes, O2 flow. Copy. What's that? EV2 is proceeding up ingress. Three checks for ingress. EV1 is good. EV2 is good. Good. 14 good. Copy. Coming on in. All right, and just like that, Sarah's going to start making her way in. Check those hatch seals again. SpaceX copies on striker plates. And EV2, I have one more ask for the hatch, if you can uh, check that out as well when ready to copy. Ready? Right, copy. Copy. And EV2, what I'll have you do is, when you ingress, can you get eyes on the hatch handle mechanism and see if the handle has been stowed in the do not stow uh, window and report if you can see that? Check it. Just outside. 
outside. Copy, just outside, thank you. Just outside the range. Sex, deorbit burn complete, performance nominal, nose cone closure initiated. We show the same and track it. Confirmation there that we had a successful and nominal deorbit burn. So we're now going to see the nose cone begin its closing uh, process. It takes a couple minutes for this to fully complete as the, I think we can see some shadows moving here, which means that we're, we're about to lose this gorgeous view. <laughs> <laughs> this is an incredible view. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, the vehicle is doing a slew, so it is maneuvering um, to orient that heat shield a little bit more towards the earth, uh, and that helps prepare us for reentry. Yeah. And we can see that nose cone coming into view now there in the top left corner. Once it is all the way down, um, there will be some hooks that lock in to make sure that it is locked up, as Jesse had said earlier. Once again, we will not be using the forward bulkhead Draco thrusters anymore. Honestly, this view is just so cool to see everything that's happening. You can still see Earth. You've got Dragon maneuvering. You've got the nose cone closing and you get to see the Skywalker mobility aid all in one. We can see that nose cone coming down to its final position ever so slowly and ever so sadly. <laughs> Slow and steady. Uh. And again, we close the nose cone in preparation for re-entry of the vehicle. This helps keep the nose cone safe intact with the vehicle. Um, again, we are going to close this and lock this. Uh, and this protects the top part of the vehicle as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Now, we don't necessarily need it for Dragon, but we do want to protect that Skywalker uh, during re-entry, which we don't typically have or haven't had before on Dragon missions. Um, so this nose cone will actually keep that Skywalker mobility aid pretty safe as well. Indeed. Now, while all this has been going on, the vehicle has initiated the Nitrox suit purge. This helps to keep our crew members cool and comfortable during re-entry which once again, we expect that to occur uh, here in a few minutes, in about a half hour, or a little bit less than a half hour. The exterior of the vehicle will reach temperatures of about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And the crew members remain comfortable, really, uh, even though the outside is quite extreme. Um, thanks to the environmental systems inside the Dragon capsule and the thermal protection system on the exterior of the capsule. Um, and we are uh, a little over halfway through that blackout period. We are expecting to hopefully gain comms back uh, in about a couple minutes from now again. Uh, and this, you can see on your screen, is the first ground view of the Dragon capsule making its way back entering the Earth's atmosphere. I love this view. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's so fun to watch this. I can only imagine what it would be like to watch it with our own eyes. Um, this thermal view uh, in particular is really cool because you can, you can see the trail behind it. Oh, now, that is so awesome. There's well, four humans inside of that capsule yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> now. Once again, we are in the anticipated communications blackout period. Um, basically, there is an envelope of ionized air around the spacecraft, and it blocks radio signals from reaching Dragon. So this basically plasma field around it prohibits us from commanding the vehicle or from communicating with the crew. Uh, so this anticipated blackout period lasts about seven minutes, so 
Uh, we should be coming out of it here in about the next minute or so. We will probably start to hear uh, the SpaceX core begin to reach out to the Dragon capsule, uh, just trying to hail them. Or we might even hear from uh, the Polariston crew first. Oh. That's an incredible view wow. from the recovery <laughs> ship uh, stationed <laughs> out in the water. That is a sight to see for the people that are watching this live. Uh, yeah. It's not a comet. It is just the Polaris Dawn crew coming back to Earth. Wow, that is an amazing view. <laughs> Once again, we expect this uh, blackout period to end in about a minute. Another view of the... Dragon SpaceX, come check. I can hear you loud and clear. Help me, SpaceX. Loud and clear, Jared. Expect automated shoot deployment. Incredible views, incredible comms. We have regained communications with the Polaris Dawn crew. This is a drone circling the recovery vessel. And that little white dot, I should start, the big white dot on the right, obviously the moon, the little white dot there in the center of your screen is the Dragon Resilience vehicle making its way, its final few kilometers back down to planet Earth after spending five days in orbit. Wow, just some epic views tonight. <laughs> you can hear the crowd here in Hawthorne getting excited. We've confirmed that we have comms with the crew. Dragon SpaceX, GPS converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue shoot deploy. Copy that, SpaceX. We show the same in tracking. And the crew is still traveling very quickly right now as they're coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. But as you heard, the drogue chutes should be deploying here shortly, and that's going to slow them down significantly. Yeah, we, we expect those to deploy in about 90 seconds. And as we heard in those comms, it's triggered by GPS. So the Dragon capsule using that, um, that, that GPS will automatically know exactly when to deploy it. And that happens around 40 kilometers. Once the drogue parachutes deploy, about a minute after that, we'll see the main parachutes. And it's pretty incredible that we only... Uh... We can see seat rotation now underway. This helps put the crew in a uh, more ergonomic position in anticipation of Brace for drogue window. Copy, we're bracing. Should see those chutes deploy here shortly. And you can see the crew bracing <laughs> as instructed <laughs> for the change in velocity. Standing by for deployment of the drogue parachutes. These will help bring the vehicle down from about 350 miles per hour when they deploy down to about 119 miles per hour when the main parachutes deploy. There we can see that the <laughs> drogue chutes have successfully deployed. <laughs> it's a great thermal image. And that view is from the actual basin where those drogue parachutes are located. Dragon SpaceX visual on two healthy drogues. Copy that SpaceX, we show the same. <laughs> These drogue parachutes help to stabilize the Dragon capsule and get it into the right orientation before those main parachutes uh, pop out, as well as providing that initial deceleration. This is such a great thermal shot of the, the Dragon capsule. You can see it turning a little bit with the drug parachutes. And there are the four main chutes now deployed. They'll slowly open up to their full uh, deployment here in just a few seconds.
incredible views of the Polaris Dawn crew returning to Earth after five days <laughs> in Earth's orbit. The crowd here at Mission Control in Hawthorne cheering. <laughs> it's a beautiful sight to see. Copy that, SpaceX, can you show the same? 1,000. Copy, 1,000. Beautiful sight to see those four healthy main parachutes. So great. Now yeah. In about two minutes, we expect our splashdown to occur. And you may hear the crew and the core talking. They're uh, communicating about their altitude as they make their way back down to Earth. We should start. Yeah, there it is. So we should start to hear and our, our hearing. Uh, our commander, Jared Isaacman, call out the altitude as they descend to the ocean's surface. We can see the Polaris Dawn crew nestled in their seats there on the left-hand side of your screen as they anticipate their splashdown. Copy, six. You can see the difference in velocity. This is a lot gentler than just a few minutes ago. That Dragon is coming back down to Earth. Absolutely. <laughs> These main parachutes deploy at about 119 miles per hour and help slow the Dragon capsule down to about 15 miles per hour when it makes contact with the ocean. You can also see that the capsule is down. The capsule is now stabilized. It's no longer spinning like we saw it with the drogue parachutes. Two hundred, we're bracing. Copy two hundred and brace. Racing for splashdown. That will be the final call we hear from Jared until contact with the ocean surface. Standing by for a splashdown of the Polaris Dawn crew. And there you can see. As you can see on your screen, and by the cheers behind us, the Polaris Dawn crew has successfully splashed down. Welcome back to planet Earth, Polaris Dawn. SpaceX recovery team now moving into place to begin the process of strapping the Dragon capsule up with the necessary uh, rigging in order to lift it onto the recovery vessel. Dragon capsule appears to be in a pretty stable uh, position. After SpaceX Dragon vehicle code one, cruise code one. SpaceX copies code one. Now the recovery teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away. So it's going to take them just about 30 minutes to make their way to Jared, Kid, Sarah, and Anna, who are currently inside of the Dragon capsule that you see there on your screen back here, home on Earth. That call out that we heard earlier, uh, confirmation of what uh, I had said a little bit prior to in terms of that stable configuration, that code one call out um, is the reflection of the crew's reporting of that of that landing position. We can see the Dragon capsule bobbing in the distance. Like Jesse said, the recovery team is a little ways away from the splashdown location, uh, obviously to ensure their safety, um, as well as the safety of the Polaris Dawn crew. So it takes a little while for the large recovery vessel to make its way 
over to the Dragon capsule, but there are a couple of fast boats that we will likely see come into screen um, sooner than later. And those fast boats carry... Hey, thanks, Dragon. We're stable one. Those fast boats carry... Copy, stable one. Those fast boats carry the recovery team members that will scoop up the parachutes from the water, <coughs> excuse me, as well as perform the initial safety checks to make sure that there are no hypergolic fuel vapors or um, uh, any, any basically potentially harmful vapors remaining around the Dragon capsule following the deorbit sequence. So we'll see a crew with some personal protective equipment uh, on around the uh, wearing that personal protective equipment around the capsule, performing those safety checks before allowing anyone to get uh, too close to the capsule. Yeah, and I love that we have those fast boats. You know, instead of waiting for the recovery vessel to make it uh, with crew members on board there, we have the fast boats to get there while the recovery vessel is making its way towards the capsule, and we can do all that work in advance. And they are very fast, as you can Dragon see. SpaceX, on behalf of the entire team of SpaceX, welcome home. We have pulled go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect, expect personnel alongside in approximately one minute. Happy that SpaceX and uh, Polaris Dawn, we are mission complete. Thanks for all the big help pulling this mission together. Now we did see a jet ski pass by. That jet ski has a couple uh, recovery folks on board. They've got the go to do those uh, you know, gas and hazardous checks to make sure that Dragon uh, is safe for the recovery vessel to approach. Yeah, and this view here is actually from a drone hovering near the Dragon capsule, so it gives you a little bit better perspective of how close the fast boats are. Like I mentioned before, some of them are uh, scouring the water looking for the parachutes that were released after Dragon splashed down. We'll try to retrieve those. Uh, and the, another fast boat will approach and begin those safety checks for any hypergolic vapors. Uh, and yeah, we can see them getting, oh, there, actually you can kind of see one of those parachutes there floating in the water to the right hand side. And then the moon in the distance. <laughs> what a great view. Some great lighting from the moon at this yeah. light, this uh, night uh, splashdown tonight. And I'm pretty sure this is uh, the first time we've had these views on our recovery webcasts. <laughs> so it's pretty cool to see. I love, <laughs> I love that we get this, this view right here <laughs> where we can see the, the lights on inside Dragon Capsule <laughs> through the windows. Almost looks uh, like the eyes of Dragon. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So the fast boat that is closest to the Dragon capsule, uh, that is the crew that will begin. Yeah, you can see with the stick there, that is basically a hypergolic um, uh, detection device. Uh, and yeah, they will attach to the Dragon capsule to get a little closer. Uh, and we can see that they have respirators on. This helps ensure that if there are any lingering vapors, that uh, they will not be exposed to those. Now the recovery team, just like the Polaris Dawn crew, uh, they perform quite a bit of training in order to be able to perform these activities safely. In fact, uh, if for those of you that have never watched our recovery, um, shows before, but there will actually be someone that jumps into the water and begins climbing on Dragon Capsule in order to secure the straps that are necessary to lift the, the Dragon Capsule out of the water. Oh, there's a cool shot there because you can actually see the basin where the main parachutes were located. That's where uh, the, the, oh, here's a thermal view now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that lower, larger basin is where the main parachutes 
were located. A dragon capsule definitely looks toasty, having <laughs> come back through the Earth's atmosphere. A little bit toasty there. It was a little hot coming back. Yeah. <laughs> And again, right now the recovery team is ensuring the safety of the crew, uh, making sure there's no hazardous gases around the vehicle. They're pulling the chutes out of the water. Which is what that thing is below <laughs> the dragon capsule there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. It is not a giant squid. <laughs> I love how there are lights on these boats. Uh, maybe not there. Actually, I take that back. I don't think it's lights on the boats. I think it's lights with some of... Um, Dragon SpaceX, Hypergolf sweeps, and unfired ordnance checks nominal rigging in progress approximately two, five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC. Copy that. Two, five minutes for capsule lift. And I'm glad all the checkouts are good. All right, great news there, um, letting us know, and we can see that the crew members have uh, basically taken off their respirators, allows them to work a little bit more efficiently. Uh, also heard that the crew will have their- Dragon SpaceX for PMC. PMC standing for Private Medical Conference. So this is an opportunity to check in Go with- SpaceX. I would like to try and do the PMC in 10 minutes, one zero minutes, looking for crew to be okay with that wait. Crew's good. We'll call you if we need to pull it in, but right now, one zero minutes seems good. Copy. All right. So that PMC private medical conference, that's just an opportunity for the crew to chat with the flight surgeon, check in, make sure everybody's feeling good. So it sounds like the crew is on board to have that occur in 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the recovery teams here on your screen scurrying oh there we our first view of the individual <laughs> on top of the capsule <laughs> uh yeah we <laughs> i have said this in many splashdown webcasts before not enough money in the world to convince me to do that <laughs> job i have so much admiration and respect for the people that can uh just doing that in dark water <laughs> would be terrifying to me and i love how efficient and well trained all of these individuals are they, you, I, we can see it at, in action here. They they function as a, a really strong unit altogether. Um, even in, I mean, these waters are pretty calm, but you can see the capsule and the boats kind of moving around. Um, and it's, it's not like they're on land. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kate, I mean, at least they are in, near the Florida Keys. Uh, they probably got some pretty clear water, even though it is nighttime. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, jumping on top of the capsule and <laughs> <laughs> trying to, to rig up the Dragon capsule there. It looks like a pretty fun job, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, nighttime would be a hard no. <laughs> Daytime, maybe. Dragon SpaceX for PMC. SpaceX. All right, we're actually ready to do a PMC now, so I'm going to be privatizing Dragon to Ground. You'll next hear from the ship surgeon. Copy that, SpaceX. Again, just some great views here. This is the recovery vessel with the helipad on top of it. Again, a helicopter is going to uh, land on that pad there, uh, board the crew and take them back to land very quickly, back to their families and friends that'll hopefully be there to, to <laughs> greet them back to Earth. <laughs> I love this drone shot that we have. Uh, first time we've had a view like this for our recovery operations. 
And it's... Dragon, SpaceX, com check. Dragon, as you loud and clear, how many? Loud and clear, forward link transition complete. I mean, that's All right, we can see the recovery team continuing to pull the Dragon capsule a little bit closer. There's still one individual there in the bucket where the main parachutes uh, are stored during flight. You can also see at the top of, uh, basically at the top of what is the side hatch, there's another bucket, and that's where the drogue parachutes are located. Dragon SpaceX, rigging complete approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Copy that, five minutes till capsule lift. And again, the core communicating to the crew as they can't see outside of the capsule. So there's a lot of movements going on. There's a lot of sounds that they're going to be hearing. And there you can see the hydraulic lift mechanism lowering into position uh, in preparation for lifting the Dragon capsule out of the water. We'll see the recovery team individual who's there um, placing those attachment straps uh, onto the straps that he's already or, um, uh, uh, basically put around the circumference of the Dragon capsule. <laughs> that individual will climb up a little bit higher on the capsule and then jump off <laughs> into the dark water. <laughs> and uh, oh, here's a cool view uh, from a, uh, above the, uh, the, that helicopter pad. Uh, that is where the helicopter will land and take the four crew members back to land. So about five minutes, well, at this point, four minutes until uh, the capsule is lifted out of the water. Dragon SpaceX, brace for capsule lift. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> it's probably warm water, Kate. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> sea creatures love warm water too, in my head. <laughs> They're not going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the Dragon capsule now coming out of the water. Our first view of that well-loved heat shield at the bottom of the Dragon Resilience vehicle. Dragon now completely out of the water and will be lowered onto that cradle there. Once the Dragon capsule is lowered, we will see the recovery team who are obviously out of the way for safety reasons at this point in time. But once the capsule is um, translated and secured, we'll see them begin to hose it down with fresh water. Uh, as we reuse these capsules, um, we want to try and minimize the effects of corrosion, which of course happen due to salt water. So we will actually begin to see not only that basin where the main parachutes were located, uh, that will get rinsed out as well as the, the overall capsule. And the crew is now on the recovery vessel, probably their first moment of a little bit more stability yeah. <laughs> being back on Earth. <laughs> Again, what will happen next is once the Dragon capsule is fully seated in the nest uh, and we'll remove all the rigging from the capsule that will then translate that capsule and move it forward to a platform. Dragon SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. Stand by for translation to the egress platform. Copy that, SpaceX, standing by. All right, great news there. And uh, it looks like actually the estimation for lift was uh, uh, we, we completed it two minutes early. So like I said, it's a pretty efficient operation. 
the recovery team, not only have they performed this on numerous actual uh, human space, space flight missions, but also in, in rehearsals and, and training procedures of their own. So it looks like the crew members that you see there um, have donned some PPE once again. Um, these are respirators that help to ensure that if there are any lingering hypergolic uh, fumes that they will not be exposed to it. So they are actually installing plugs into uh, the, uh, the, basically the, the, the outlet of those Draco thrusters and performing additional uh, hypergolic sniffs to ensure that there are no residual fumes. Once they install all of the necessary Draco plugs, they will continue uh, with a final round of um, detection checks. Seems as though the first person to come out will be Anna Menon, who is on the far right side as we are looking at it. She is in seat four, yeah. So <laughs> Anna is now making her way with this assisted egress. Mission Specialist Anna Menon. <laughs> there she is. Fellow SpaceXer. Yes. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> I love this. So excited. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth, Anna. We heard um, Haley Arsenault, who was one of the mission specialists and, uh, and she, for the Inspiration4 mission, uh, we heard her say that Jared um, always let the ladies go first. And so I have a feeling that Sarah might be the next one to egress here. Yep, we can see her uh, now getting out of her seat. <laughs> she and Anna had the two window seats. SpaceX team assisting her to make sure that she doesn't hit the side hatch in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so much excitement. Our second SpaceXer to fly in space, mission specialist Sarah Gillis back on Earth. <laughs> it's so cool to see her. Now egressing is our pilot. Kid Poteet. I would bet good money that we're going to see some thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> once Kid exits. It's pretty cool to see that uh, they are coming out, standing up on their own two feet, and walking off. SpaceX Dragon, this is the final call. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Some dance moves. <laughs> That's pretty great. I think that move should be added to the required choreography for <laughs> human spaceflight missions. You know, we have the astronaut lean back when they approach <laughs> their rocket on launch day. The uh, kid shuffle, I think, should be the, the, the next one for, for post egress. <laughs> We heard Jared get one last call out on <laughs> the loops before egressing himself. And the final Polaris Dawn crew member egressing Dragon Resilience. 
Commander Jared Isaacman. <laughs> Our second frequent flyer in Dragon, completing his second mission in space. <laughs> 